Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So we're going to start out with the Bitcoin chart. This is from Huobi. We're trading at about $940 of Bitcoin over there, about $934 at Bitfinex. So fairly tight, $933 at Bitstamp. The arbitrage is pretty good. But you can see we've got a couple of support and resistance lines drawn in here. This bottom one is the extent of the correction. You can see it corrected back to the beginning of November. Um, and I was predicting about a 50% correction. We got roughly 40% maybe close to that. Over a very short period of time, you can see there roughly January 5th through the 12th and it was over. So really only a week for this correction to occur. And it went from about 9,000 Chinese Yuan to about below 5,000 Chinese Yuan. Uh, uh, and we've recovered roughly a third of that loss now. And we're nearing a, a very key place because we're nearing that breakout that we had, the continuation breakout that we had in December. So we're already back to prices in December 22nd. The market really hasn't given back that much. But uh, this is going to be a critical juncture here because uh, a breakout above this and especially maybe this area here, just below 7,000, and that leaves a lot of upside room to run, a lot of, uh, not a lot of overhead resistance and a lot of price action. So it, it's really possible that this correction could be over. We could be headed to new highs from here. I got back in, uh, we'll, we'll pull over the Bitfinex chart because that gives us dollar prices. I got back in around 750 and picked up some around 800. I'm fully long right now and was actually going to take some profits, but when I saw this, this breakout, I decided that no, I'm going to continue to hold. So I hedged myself too early and then, uh, but I got back in uh, fairly, fairly good timing. Uh, so it was pretty much a wash, maybe made a little bit on that. For people who don't like to go in and out, it, you can see that the lesson is just keep your Bitcoins. And that's Andy Hoffman's advice in his most recent interview. I, I'm really impressed with Andy Hoffman. If you listen to the interview I just did with uh, Sean of SGT Report, it's posted on the blog and the member site now. Uh, Andy Hoffman, Sean of SGT there's a few that have come around and realized that they just hadn't studied this thing very well. And when they did, they came to understand what this technology is about. So we could be off to the races here. We may actually be in the position for Bitcoin to try a new high again. Let's throw up the, uh, the indicator for the MACD and let's see what that's doing. So do we have a MACD indicator on here? Yeah, we do. So the MACD on this one, you can see uh, has pretty much, let's, let's go further out here so that we can get, um, filter out some noise. So you can see the MACD's fully reset and crossed over into the positive. Uh, that was very short-lived compared to what we've had in the past. You can see in the past with this correction, the MACD didn't cross over that fast. It, it backed and filled, and then we had this uh, long, drawn-out uh, price recovery. We could have that again, but this one seems to be much more aggressive. So we could get some new highs again here before this is over. I mentioned in my interview with Sean that was uh, published today that he said five or ten thousand dollar Bitcoin is what the web bot is saying. That's quite possible. Uh, an actual move above the old highs, which again we made new highs in the Chinese exchange, but you can see 1175 is the old high on the American exchange, and we hit 1166. So it was right there. It was ready to go into new highs. And I mentioned in my interview that sometimes Bitcoin will go three or four full from where it is once it gets into new highs and, and uh, just makes a huge new parabolic spike. We've seen that pattern happen at least three, four, five times. Maybe if you follow Bitcoin since a penny, maybe six or seven times we've seen that pattern. And we're talking about Bitcoin going from one penny to where it is today at almost $1,000. So the next chart I wanted to look at is... Let me have you guess what this is. 
This is silver, but this is silver in the Mexican peso. Kind of interesting here because it looks exactly like the U.S. chart until we get about into 2015. Near the end of 2015, the peso started to weaken significantly against the dollar. And we can see now here's another currency where the precious metals seem to have never really been in a bear market. There's a short-term bear market there, but you can see a very clear continuation of the bull market. And that's just one more currency. So again, dollar holders seem to be the last men standing. That makes sense. The dollar is the world reserve currency. It is the current empire of the world. We're going to see here in one of the videos that we look at next some strange stuff about how important the transition of power in the United States was to the powers that be and who the heck are the powers that be. But this chart here shows you that one more currency it has confirmed that silver has real value and that when your country gets in trouble and your currency starts going down the tube, then you better be in something like silver or gold or Bitcoin because uh, you know it could happen to you just like it happened. it's happening to the Mexicans. It already happened to the Venezuelans, the Greeks, the Cypriots and uh, many, many people around the world. So let's get over to this uh, conspiracy stuff. It's going to be conspiracy central from for the rest of the night. So if you're not into the big conspiracy stuff, go ahead and tune out. But this is a new channel that Jennifer found. This is Mr. E3000. The guy's a Christian. And he has he's not perfect in everything he says, but he's a really intelligent guy, and he... He's a uh, not a uh, doesn't believe in the moon landing, doesn't believe in the the ball Earth, and uh, he's uh, kind of on the cutting edge of this uh, transvestigation stuff. Which is, I spent a bit of time on that, and if you want to see a lot of videos, very convincing videos on it, he's done a lot of them. Watch his videos on these transvestigations. But this one is about Kanye West, and if you remember Kanye West kind of broke down and that's a pattern that we see when we're talking about supposed MK Ultra mind control victims. We saw it with Britney Spears. Uh, we've seen it with many, many of those stars. Lady Gaga. They all uh, are known for having these kind of psychic breaks where they seem to break out of their programming or whatever it is. That happened recently with Kanye West and uh, I want you to see this video. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I just want you to see. I don't believe this person here standing with Donald Trump is Kanye West. You tell me. I'm fairly familiar with what Kanye West looks like. This doesn't look like Kanye West to me. So Kanye West, just a few days after getting released from the nut ward, meets with the president-elect of the United States. Does that make any sense to you at all? We've been friends for a long time. A couple weeks ago, he goes on an epic rant. I am putting my career, my life, my public well standing at risk when I talk to y'all like this. Obama couldn't make America. We can't make out this entire rant, so I'm going to cut most of it out here. 2020, do you think that's something you still want to do in life? Hi, no comment about your meeting. I just want to take a picture right now. <laughs> and now he surfaces with blonde hair after getting out of the quote unquote psych ward. And this is a classic example of how they replace people. Change one thing so you think, because we all know, right? The first impression of this photo or even that video is, well, he looks different. There's something different about Kanye. Well, it must be the blonde hair. That's what it is. Maybe he lost a little weight, too. But it's the blonde hair. Don't be a crazy conspiracy theorist, right? That's crazy. Well, no, they did the same thing. 
back in late 1966 when they replaced Paul McCartney, and they've done this with plenty of other celebrities as well. In 1966, the real Paul McCartney refused to keep going along with the Illuminati agenda of turning their music into commercials for psychedelic drugs and alternative anti-Christian religion. They took him out, they replaced him, then the Beatles did the Sgt. Pepper look, they all grew mustaches, they all went in disguise. And look at this one. Donald Trump is like Kanye West for white people. That came out in March of this year. So there's already some kind of connection with Donald Trump. Uh, but let's go back to the beginning. Let's just think about Kanye West for a minute. He's married to an Illuminati tranny, first of all, Kim Kardashian. She takes so much estrogen hormone treatments that she's got the biggest ass in the world, possibly in the history of the world. All right, that's but she's an Illuminati tranny. I've done a video on her. Time Magazine, The Titans. Yeah, The Titans, The Giants, The Nephilim, Kanye West. It's telling you right there, Kanye West is a Nephilim. Nephilims exist these days as invisible spirits. They inhabit people, and there's some bloodline still remaining as well. There's cloning and breeding centers, as we've seen in his video that just came out a few months ago that featured who? Donald Trump and a bunch of Illuminati trannies like Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian and a host of other Illuminati trannies. Donald Trump is a tranny. His wife's a tranny. His entire family's full of trannies. All right. But Donald Trump in that video showing you the cloning and breeding center. So this is a clone. It's the backup Kanye in case something goes wrong with the regular Kanye. Sometimes there's a bit of humanity that remains and these people develop a conscience for deceiving us so much. He knows so many secrets, this guy. And imagine just lying the whole world every day, all day, all the time about what you're really doing, about your, what your real agenda is, about all the things you know. He had an Illuminati meltdown, as we see many times. Most of these uh, c celebrities go through that at some stage. Just like in Westworld, right? They had to take him out and replace him with another clone, the backup Kanye. Just like Westworld. What's the name of that world? Westworld. What's his name? Kanye West. Westworld, Kanye West. See a connection. That's what's going on here. Transhumanism, transgendered robots, Okay, clones, so we're going to pause this breedings. one here. This, this thing gets a lot weirder. And, you know, I had dismissed a lot of this stuff. One of the reasons that I had dismissed a lot of this stuff was that I have spent most of the last year doing serious work on studying bodybuilding and, and getting in shape and understanding testosterone levels and how to increase them and how to increase muscle mass and how to become more masculine. And, and so I spent about the last year doing that. And one of the things that I had become convinced of, not convinced of, but started to think about was that perhaps what I had believed about them transgendering people was actually just a result of hormone treatments because I've seen people, I've come to know people involved in bodybuilding who have used uh, hormones and hormone replacement therapy, hormone enhancement, and there's no question that the testosterone given to a woman has all kinds of secondary sex characteristic uh, results, including a squaring of the jaw, possibly growing an Adam's apple. And so I had dismissed a lot of this thinking that maybe they're not completely transgendering all these people, but they're just using hormones. Now, after watching a lot of Mr. E3000's videos, I'm starting to lean back the way I originally leaned was that I think that these Illuminati families have been doing this for a very, very long time. Now, this is a video he does about Buzz Aldrin, and we know that Buzz Aldrin is one of the key players in the NASA moon landing hoax, and apparently also with this flat earth thing. And I'm going to use this to give you some information about that. And then the last video is going to be about the very, very strange activity going on in the Antarctic. But let's listen to this one first. Hey guys, uh, Buzz Aldrin from the Apollo 11 fake moon landing continues 
to try to deceive us. Now they're telling us at 86 years old, he's going to the South Pole. But let's just check out this article. Now it says that they left from South Africa. South Pole, here I come. And now he got sick. Dramatic medical evacuation from Antarctica. They pulled him out of the South Pole and he's in New Zealand. Basically what they're saying is that he left from South Africa, went to the South Pole, went around the globe, and he went all the way across Antarctica, and now he's in New Zealand. So they're trying to perpetuate the myth that we live on a spherical globe spinning around at about a thousand miles an hour. We do not live in an enclosed space here. The earth would spin, the air would not. That's just one of the many reasons. I can't believe people still believe in the globe, actually. I just can't even believe it. There's people who still believe we went to the moon. I'll show a brief clip soon that just proves that they faked it, okay? And there's a lot of good, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about that. Now look at this, I, I, I'm not a, like a numerology kind of guy, you know, but I, there's, it seems like these Freemasons do use it. So in 1966, he spacewalked. 1969, went to the moon. 1996, he went to the bottom of the Atlantic to look at the Titanic. So what you have, in each one of these numbers, you have a 666, right? You flip this one upside down, 9 becomes a 6, you got 666. Flip the two 9s here, you got 666. And flip these two 9s up, now you got 666 again. So that's just one thing I noticed. Why is the South Pole? They're putting out lies about the South Pole lately. So this guy in 1969 was on a major, one of the major deceptions ever, one of the major hoaxes, you know, the moon landing. And now, 2016, he's doing another one claiming that he went around the world at the South Pole. Impossible. I don't know where they're talking about. When they say South Pole, are they just talking about the edge of the Earth at any given point here? Or, or is there one specific point they're talking about? You know, where's the South Pole on this map? The North Pole's here. You could say that makes sense right in the middle. So let's talk a little bit about the South Pole because in this next video, we're going to see there's something going on at the South Pole. Now, I covered this before when I got into the flat earth thing and the ice wall and in some of those videos, there's a lot of stuff in Hollywood that points to some really strange stuff. The Truman Show, uh, Dark City, even Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of Thrones has this winter is coming theme and there's this ice wall that's built to protect the inhabitants of the earth from whatever is outside of this wall and it seems to be some really scary undead stuff out there. Now that would just seem like crazy fiction but one has to ask the question why is everybody going to the South Pole? And let's listen to this video. So what's going on in Antarctica? John Kerry, Secretary of State, right now he's in Antarctica, of all places, this very moment. Highest U.S. official... Well, this is not really true, actually, is it? I think Obama made a secret trip there earlier this year. So in 2016, right now, we got John Kerry there. And in February of this year, Patriarch Kirill was the first Orthodox leader to visit Antarctica. And he met with the Pope right around the same time in Cuba. And Obama, I believe he made a secret trip to Antarctica because he extended his trip in Argentina with a Patagonia visit, which is the southernmost part of Argentina and not so far away from uh, Antarctica, at least some of those islands. So he could have very easily snuck off to Antarctica. And uh, I'm going to show you how this ties into a lot of things. Now, in my last video, I talked about this executive order from May 6, 2016, facilitation of a presidential transition, where basically he expanded his transition team. And really, if you're transitioning out of power, you really don't need a huge team, do you? And see what he did? He, he added these people, these officials, people from all kinds of different departments, people from the National Security Affairs, and this one, most interesting, Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, which shows you that they're basically planning a false flag event because Homeland Security arose out of 9-11, false flag event. Economic policy, 
National Economic Council, National Intelligence, Office of Management and Budget, any other executive branch official the president determines appropriate. So basically anyone he wants, really. (laughs) Just about anybody. This is a transition team, keep in mind, where he's supposed to be leaving office. And he can go off and play golf, whatever he wants to do, right? He, he's supposed to be leaving office, but he's ramped up this team, transition team. How hard could it be? You just pack your bags and go. That's, that's all you got to do. Have a guy teach Donald how to use the remote control, and you're done. Get out of there. Don't look back, right? And then if you look at the fact sheet, this is all from uh, whitehouse.gov, by the way. Here's the key part right here. Engaged agencies not traditionally included in the formal transition planning process. Okay, so this is like Barry's new thing that he's doing. No one's done it like this before. And you'll see that this group, including more than 200 entities, has been engaged fully in the transition process from the beginning and has met regularly over the past several months. This is... This is incredibly important sentence right here. 200 entities. Now look at this. Look at this here. Look at this. The Book of Enoch, which I believe is the oldest book in the world. This book's about 5,000 years old. Talking about the angels in heaven. The angels, the children of heaven, right here. Okay, this is chapter 6, verse 2. The angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after the, uh, the beautiful women, the human women, them. And said to one another, Come, let us choose wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And they were in all 200. So 200 fallen angels, they basically uh, rebelled against God, and they, they planned to take over the world. 200. 200 entities, right here. 200 entities in the book of Enoch, chapter 6. You can find the same story in the Bible. Genesis 6, verse 1 through 4, when man began to multiply in the face of the land, and daughters were born to them the sons of God. This is the angels saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any they chose. Verse 4, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God, the angels, fallen angels, came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown, uh, also known as the giants, the Nephilim. What happened to the Nephilim? Well, the book of Enoch, chapter 15, says, You have defiled yourself with the blood of women and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore, I have not appointed wives for you, for as the spiritual ones of heaven. Now, the giants who are produced from the spirits of, and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born of men. From the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth. And evil spirits shall they be called. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies. Because these things were not human. They have nowhere else to go. God has an order and a plan and a design and a system for spirits of people. When we die, we go to Sheol. We're resurrected later on. We're judged. These things, they're not really part of the plan. They're like a, a virus in the software. We have to get rid of them, right? They're, they're, they're corrupting our software, essentially, of this world. So there's this huge antivirus uh, program being, that's, that's going on in the world. So while these things are deceiving us, um, and then they're going to get wiped out in the end. And we're going to re- reboot the system. Going to get a new computer. <laughs> a new heaven and a new earth. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies. That's what uh, demons are. They came from the Nephilim. From the 200 watchers. So you see here, this group, Obama's transition team, including more than 200 entities. 200 demonic entities. Why? Because of the book of Enoch. 200 Fallen angels came to earth. And these things are still alive, man. These things are eternal. The fallen angels. The Nephilim die, but their spirits live on as demons. But the fallen angels, these are angelic beings, and they rebelled against God. They're fallen angels. Name of Bob Dylan's last album, right? 200. Look at the word choice, man. They tell us what's going on. We just have to look carefully. Not traditionally included in the formal transition planning process. 200 entities has been engaged fully in the transition process from the beginning and has met regularly over the past several months. They have been meeting with more than 200 demonic entities over the last several months. 
Where? In Antarctica. Antarctica is the edge of the world. That's where the door is between Earth and heaven. Okay, it's not some kind of weird uh, dimensional thing where they just pop out of nowhere. There's an edge to the atmosphere between this world and the next world, the heavens above, whether it's water or some kind of plasma or these fallen angels. And angels, they're kind of basically energy and light and all this kind of stuff. They're not like us, flesh and blood. They can take on our form. They can inhabit us. I don't know the details here, but this is what's going on. Antarctica. 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 Everyone's going to Antarctica. All right. Google Earth. Now, this is the the outdated uh, globe model that we don't use anymore, but that's what we have. Let's check it out. So, Kerry, John Kerry, right this very moment, Pegasus Ice Runway, which is right here. And this, you'll see, this is about 77, 78 degrees uh, in the southern hemisphere. Okay, it's this little airstrip in the middle of nowhere, the edge of nowhere, I guess I should say. But Antarctica is very interesting. So I'll let you watch uh, the rest of this yourself. But if you put it all together, uh, he does some calculations here, and it appears that Kerry is flying right to the very edge of the world. And a lot of people have been going down there. So what on earth is going on? I don't know. But you have to wonder about this stuff. Why couldn't, you know, if these people are meeting with these, uh, some people call them aliens, uh, advanced civilizations from another planet or whatever. If that were the case uh, and they have their lovely satanic rituals that they do in underground underneath the capitals of the countries of the world why can't they just have their little satanic coven meeting uh, underneath the white house and meet with their 200 entities unless uh, this guy is correct and these 200 entities or whatever these things are are outside of the ice wall just like in game of thrones where they protect the, this wall, the Night's Watch, and uh, Jon Snow, who, by the way, died and was resurrected from the dead. That was in the last uh, season of Game of Thrones. Went and evacuated uh, the wildlings of the north back behind the wall because of these uh, undead entities that were on the other side of the wall. So... This is some really weird stuff here. I can't just dismiss this out of hand. I encourage you to watch all the videos from Mr. E3000, especially the transvestigation ones. There's something going on. Uh, his contention pretty much is that these people, many of these transgendered individuals that are in positions of power all around the world now are basically hosts for... Uh, demonic entities that are running the entire world and uh, also finish the Kanye West video uh, that doesn't look like Kanye West to me uh, but again um, we just don't know it's really strange stuff so back to the charts uh, Bitcoin is gonna try to make a move it looks to me another move to go into new highs probably within weeks uh, it's it's looking very very strong and of course silver is very weak in the US dollar which is the last man standing it's very interesting that if this strange strange story is true why is it that it's very very important to all of the we'll use the term entities of the entire world that there, this transition of power is so important that this unexpected candidate, which uh, if you listen to my interview with Sean, uh, I say that he may be of a different faction than the existing factions. Uh, there seems to be a, a lot of concern about uh, the transition uh, to this new power coming up here that... Uh, some of these entities are concerned about and we'll talk to you next time